Uh, I don't know where I am. The trouble is with being in a graveyard at night, uh, among all the other troubles. Everywhere looks the same. I mean, this looks the same as we were five minutes ago. Uh, what was that? Hidden all around the world are places we've abandoned. But these ruins don't always lie empty. I'm zoologist Yusuf Rafiq, and with my wildlife filmmaker friend Dan O'Neill, I'm on a mission to see what moves in after we've gone. For this investigation, we're exploring 52 acres of a forest that feels like paradise. But it wasn't actually ever meant to be a place for the living to enjoy. Incredible. It's a little bit eerie. Like, yeah. There are so many graves. Over a quarter of a million people are buried here, so there's so much history. Seeing the names on all the graves is kind of odd, isn't it? At the same time, so beautiful. I mean, look at that light. Mm. We're looking for wildlife in Nunhead Cemetery. Once one of the biggest cemeteries in London, the gates were locked in 1969. Inside, time stood still. Look at that one. I know. It's bigger than my house. <laughs> Have a look through there. I feel like I'm that little boy from um, It and Pennywise the Clown is about to ask me to come inside. Nunhead first opened in 1840, meaning that some of these graves are nearly 200 years old. But you can see how important it was to these people. People spent a lot of money on their wedding, but back then people spent a lot of money on their death. But even though the dead were lying quiet, other creatures were stirring. Oh, look at this little guy. Oh, I'm walking through the spiders. No, thank you. Sorry, mate, you'll have to rebuild that web. This is a sycamore tree. These are incredibly fast growing, so there's so many of them here in Nunhead. As it became abandoned and people stopped really paying for burial so much after the First World War and even more so after the Second World War, the plants just took over. And one of those main ones is the sycamore just because it's such a fast growing species. We see if we can find some of those parrots, so those parakeets. If we can find the parakeets, we might be able to find some of their nest holes. This place is absolutely spectacular. It's very overgrown, so it's, you have to watch where you step. It's really interesting that we just have graves here in the middle of the woodlands. The nature's kind of just overgrown and slowly taken over. The ash trees, the sycamore, the bramble, the ivy and since then it's just kind of been left to do its own thing. So it's kind of that accidental rewilding. I think it's incredible how quickly it's happened. The whole of Nunhead is now both a burial ground and a nature reserve that's open to visitors. There are hundreds of species living amongst the graves, including more than 200 invertebrates, mammals such as voles, three species of bats, and 120 species of fungi, including one of the spookiest, dead man's fingers. You can see here how they're just shooting out of the ground. So they like to grow on broadleaf dead wood. Um, so species like beech trees are perfect for these guys that just sort of find their way in the undergrowth. And one of the things I love about an area like this is that it's so undisturbed. You can really see how all these species are interlinked. You can see the whole life cycles. So a fungi species like this one will come in and soften the wood. And then you get things like invertebrates coming in and breaking down that organic matter further. But I just love things like this. You can so easily just walk past and never even set your eyes on them. But as creepy and as weird looking as they are, they're so important to the environment. Right, we are off in search of birds. We're hearing them a lot, but seeing them is another thing. They fly overhead, but actually don't sit down for too long. Okay. Let's get that MV down. Just got ourselves a ring-necked parakeet by what looks like its nest hole. And I'm pretty sure that this is a female, because even though they're called ring-necked parakeets, it's actually the males that have that ring neck. No one knows exactly where all of these parakeets in London originated from. Some people say that it was an escape from a movie set in the 50s. Some people say it was musicians that released them. But these guys are fantastic escape artists. And being incredibly popular pets from the Victorian times, it's likely that they just found their way out of their cages many, many times over many, many years and found each other out in the wild and created this population. 
but we're filming right now in the middle of a cemetery in London. Just as I was packing up to find Yousef, I spot something I've been really hoping to see. Okay, I think there is something up there. That is a great spot of woodpecker. Oh, look at him go. That's a female. The males have the red there. The young ones have the red crown and then that rufous bit. Females lose it and have the darker head. She's a bit in the dark, but every time she comes round, the light hits her and you see that beautiful black and white and that lovely red underside. She's really going for it. She's looking for grubs in that branch up there. She's got this incredibly specialized skull and beak. It's incredibly sharp, but her skull is what I think is the most amazing part. Because most birds, if they were smacking their head against branches like that, they'd surely get brain damage. But greater spotted woodpeckers have this shock absorbent skull that allows her to keep hitting that branch and pull out all those grubs with no problems at all. So lucky that we were able to see them. You occasionally hear that drumming sound, the classic drumming sound, which they use as a territorial display often. Less lucky, in my opinion, is the next place we get to explore. The ruined Anglican chapel stood at the heart of Nunhead for a hundred years, surviving the bombings of World War II, only to get burnt down by arson in the 70s. But there's one section that remains untouched, the crypt. Oh my God, it's oh, huge. It's... Oh, and it's cold. It's really cold. It's creepy, isn't it? Look at this. So the, this, this crypt is where all of the most expensive burials in the entire place was. So the really richest people, um, uh, consider that right, 282,000 people are buried in this cemetery and these are all the most expensive burials. So there are some really important people from yeah. history in here. So creepy. I wonder if there's any wildlife in it though. I feel like it's, it's got to be something, right? Oh, that is so horrible. That is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. I'm not going near it. I'm nah, not playing with that. I can't do it. I can't watch it. I can't watch this. Okay. You're supposed to be bug face. I know. What are you doing? It's because you're freaking me out. Right, I'm going to I'm, gonna get I'm calm. literally sweating. It's, it's high up. <sighs> Look at it. That is spectacular. It's going to bite you. There we go. Don't say that. Beautiful. Oh my god, that oh is. Oh my god, okay, this is so this intense. Is beautiful. So, they're not actually super rare, but because they only tend to live in dark, damp locations, we don't really see them very often. So, places like caves, hence the name, um, also sewers, and apparently crypts. Really cool. Okay, I'm gonna make you hold him. Because you've brought me in here, so you're definitely holding him. Literally, this. I'd rather die. Oh, I'd rather well, die. That, can be, that can be arranged. It's actually very beautiful. Is it? Okay. No, okay, okay. You know what? Face your fears. Face, Face your fears. fears. I can do this. Okay. I can you do ready? this. Yeah? Alright, love. Yeah? You ready? No, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. There you go. See? Oh my god, I hate it. I feel like it's gonna bite me. It looks Oh, angry. wait, wait, it's, it's about to bite you. Don't you, don't even say that. No, it, it has got its fangs out. No, it doesn't. Also, I lied, these are like massively venomous. Dude, honestly, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out. I don't like it, I don't like it, it looks cool. so angry. I'll oh, see you later so then, yeah? I'm yeah. sweating, I'm so... See no. you later, mate. Oh, oh you... Ah! Stop it, stop it, we're not friends. Right, you, Seth, look at this. Apparently, these are the sweetest blackberries in all of London. So these are fertilised by our ancestors. So yeah. let me guess, you want me to eat this, don't yeah. you? Go on. Is it good? Not it terrible. Is oh. that, it's quite... Did you not Why do I always get the rotten ones? Mine was quite nice. Come on, man. Right, let's get no, This try. is mine. For oh, God's sake. Right, I'm going to find myself a big Actually, one. Actually, these are lovely. Great. That's just great news, isn't it? So the day's coming to a close. Mm -hmm. We've seen some awesome stuff today. But there's some stuff we didn't get to see. And I think it's probably because there's dogs running around, there's people here but the gates are closed at night. <sighs> Those are the creepiest crows I've ever seen. They just flew in here because they knew we were here. They're like, ah, oh, the doors are locked, they're, they're screwed. 
We'll be pecking their eyes out by morning. The spookiest species of bird and it's out. I don't know why they have to have angel statues and not like cute bunny rabbits. Why do they have, to have creepy cute women? Cute bunny rabbits? That wouldn't be scary. I can deal with those. And John Allen's grave from earlier. What's that? What have you got in good? your hand? I didn't realise that bright was it Florence is. Nightingale. <laughs> hey, you know her second in command is actually buried here. No, I didn't. Look at that. That you know. might not seem bright right now, but that is going to keep us alive. I'm going to be honest, that lamp isn't making me feel any better about our chances of survival. We've got special access to film here tonight after closing time, but as the light begins to fade, I get the feeling that we're not alone. I think I can see something. No, it's not a ghost, is it? It's moving. It's a fox. It's a fox. Yeah, it's definitely a fox. No, it's not. It's still there. The more I stare at it, the more and more it's looking like a post. It's not moving. I'm going to ignore Yusef and head deeper into the forest to take a closer look. This is horrid, isn't it? Check this out. Oh my god! Nah, mate. That was horrible. <laughs> Everything is so much scarier at night. Just walked through a spider's web. <laughs> this has got to be the worst lamp I've ever seen. Okay, so we are out looking for bats and bats are pretty difficult animals to identify by sight, particularly at night because obviously it's dark and bats being nocturnal, you know, that's when they like to come out, which is pretty inconsiderate of them. But luckily we've got this nifty piece of kit that can detect bats not by sight, but by sound. And bats, of course, use echolocation. So they will shoot out this high-pitched frequency call that will bounce off an object, hopefully a prey species, and bounce back to them. They'll pick it up with those super sensitive ears and they'll be able to tell the size and the distance of the prey item. It's getting dark pretty rapidly now. There we go. Can you hear that? So that, there we go. So that's a pipistrel. Most likely a common pipistrel, because we've got it at about 45 kilohertz. That was awesome. And they're of course out hunting at night, so a great food source for bats are the moths. And there's plenty of moths around here. Incredible. It's amazing how we're not able to hear that with our human ears. There's just this entire different world on a different wavelength of sound. So this here is a fleur. It's typically used by police. We've just spotted a fox running up here. And this is the best way of figuring out which direction he's going in. God, it's kind of spooky, isn't it, thinking that we're the only people here. You see something? Oh, that was horrible. You see him? Whereabouts? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, you see that eye shine? Oh, no, it's a cat. That was a cat. It's not exactly the wildlife we were looking for. To be fair though, we're getting quite a lot of predatory mammals tonight. Whoa, it's quick. So we're literally just walking along the path here with our light on and we came across this devil's coach horse beetle. Now this is a large species of rove beetle. It tends to live around decaying plant matter, so places like this are amazing for it, because it's a ferocious predator, so that's where it likes to hunt all of its invertebrates. It's very quick. And it's also got a couple of defense mechanisms and threat displays. So it can raise up its abdomen, a bit like a scorpion, does a scorpion-like pose, um, and that's to intimidate its predators. It also, if it needs to, can spray out a foul-smelling a foul -smelling liquid out of its abdomen. And finally, it can also deliver quite a painful bite. There it goes. Speedy little fella. I have no idea where we are. And I haven't been looking out for where we are either. Because I've been so busy looking for a fox. 
It's amazing that this place is exactly an example of what happens when nature takes things back. The graves have all moved and the trees have kind of twisted and turned them. It's kind of an example of what could happen to certain places if we rewild it, you know. If you give it a chance, nature really does come back. Right in my frame. He's looking right at me. Look at those huge ears. Oh my Lord, this is so amazing. Wow, look at him. He's got his full face, that is an absolute fox. So these foxes here, they're really interesting because in London, unlike their rural counterparts, these foxes have actually started to change. Their noses are getting a bit shorter to adapt to their more urban lifestyles of scavenging. And that's not all. Their skulls are actually changing shape in a way that could mean their brains are getting smaller. This is similar to the changes dogs went through when they became domesticated. Such an amazing response to being around people. But that was amazing, that was amazing. And to see him on the night vision camera with the graves around as well. That was awesome. Should we take a sit down? Yeah. Uh, we do need to find Dan now, so. I, I honestly am quite lost. Uh, I don't know where I am. The trouble is with being in a graveyard at night, uh, among all the other troubles, is that everywhere looks the same. I mean, this looks the same as we were five minutes ago. Where is he? He's just trodden the stick that scared the life out of me. I thought that was a ghost. It's just a headless angel, that's fine. Totally fine. It's a headless angel in a graveyard. That's exactly what I want to see. So it is totally different being here at night than in the day, obviously. I mean, I thought the daytime was creepy enough. Turns out, nighttime's a hell of a lot creepier. But for me, it's the sounds. The sounds of the birds flapping their wings or an unexpected twig breaking under Russell, the cameraman's foot, or anything really. It's the things that make you jump. But... Okay. Did you hear that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is starting to feel this is starting to feel a bit terrifying. Which way? I don't even know where the path is anymore. Is it? Uh, let's go this way. Uh, what was that? <laughs> Something is definitely messing with us. Target acquired. The target is acquired. He's mine. Ah! Oh my god. <laughs> what? I mean, that would have been scary if you didn't make loads of noise running through all the bushes, but. That was a lot of fun. It's good to see you again. Good to see you too. But I can't, I'm so surprised. What a wicked place. I know. I'm quite enjoying it. Yeah, I'm me too. terrified, but yeah, it's quite cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Very cool. Do you know what? I think it's time we got the hell out of this place. Should we go? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. I'm done. Cool. <laughs> Do you know the way out? No, I don't know the way out. <laughs> oh, Are you all right? <laughs> ah, they've come to get me. Right, okay. Let's, uh, go. Where? Let's go. As we make our way out, all I can think about is that it's amazing that a place like this exists at all. Bombed, abandoned, burnt, but still standing. In the short time we've been here, it's become really obvious to me that this is no longer just a sanctuary for the dead, but one for all the animals that now call it home. A secret, wild corner of London, hidden in plain sight.